Ready. Mm -hmm. um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Rebecca. And I'm Denise. Um, so we work on the New York Times graphics desk, where part of our job is creating maps for news. And we're here today to tell you about different ways that we make maps automatically. And um, it's funny because there's some similarities, <laughs> overlaps with the last talk, but hopefully it's still interesting for everyone. And you can follow along. Uh, th that Bailey is just the slides link. Yeah. Um, so, um, so some of the common problems that we face because we work at a news organization is that, um, as Dylan was saying, that we need to get things done quickly and we need to collaborate with others. Um, and sometimes the map data is too big and opening it in QGIS or ArcGIS would be really slow and sometimes it even crashes. Um, and obviously you also don't want to load that on a web page. Um, and in other cases, the map data is updating, for example, with hurricanes or wildfires or other developing stories. So we need to, you know, be updating the maps, but you don't want to have to do it manually every time. So we need some ways to make maps automatically. Um, right. So this is a story that, that Denise and I worked on this year. Um, when the Boeing's MAX 8 jets were being grounded around the world um, following several crashes. And we wanted to show all the routes that where the MAX 8 flew and which countries were grounding the flight. Um, so the problem with this, trying to get this map together, um, we ran into is that the data file, which you know, has all the flights in the world over several days. Um, it's really big. Um, the file itself is, the GeoJSON file itself is um, 34 megabytes. And so it would be really slow to open it in QJS, try to manipulate it and then export it. And we needed to do this multiple times as the story develops. So we, we needed some way for us to do that automatically. Um, so the solution is that we wrote a bunch of scripts and which helped us rasterize the data and style the map to what we wanted without having to open QJS or ArcGIS. Um, so one of the tools that we used for this is called MapShaper and which is a command line tool for processing vector data that was written by our coworker Matthew Block. Um, and it's super helpful which we use for this project. Um, so we're, I'm gonna show several commands, simple commands that you, we used and for this project. Um, so using MapShaper, you can specify the input file and then we specify the projection. In this case, we chose the Robinson projection for the world. Um, and then you specify the output file there. Um, so that's the first step is we reprojected the file, just like that. Um, and then the second step, we sorted the data using the sort command, putting the affected flights so that they would show up on top. Um, so that's another thing you can do with MapShaper. And then the third step, again, using MapShaper, we added styles for the, for the map. Um, so we added a stroke color based on the data. Um, and we added a stroke width and also opacity. And then we did dash O map data color dot SVG, which exports an SVG file. Um, but then we realized we also wanted, actually wanted a transparent PNG. So we used another command line tool called SVG export to um, create a PNG, right? Um, so this is a file that was generated using those commands. So, and then, so now we have the data and now we have the script that will let us generate this map with different data over and over again really quickly. Um, and then, so more about the setup, um, another tool that we use all the time is called AI2HTML, which is a library written by our graphics director, Archie Say. Um, it basically takes an Illustrator file and it converts all the text to HTML so that it reads better online. Um, so here we are setting up a base map for this project. Um, we have a base map, really simple base map of the world here. It's hard to see on this screen, but uh, 
Yeah. yeah, I guess the contrast. So imagine there's the world on the thing. Um, I can see it on my screen. But, and then on top of that layer, we have the map labels, which is in the HTML format. So you have the JPEG base map and the HTML labels on top. And then, so we put, put it together. Again, <laughs> there's supposed to be a world on this thing. Um, and then we put, and then we add our data layer in between those two. So you have your labels still on top, and then your data, and then the base map of the world here. Um, and then, which ended up, which is the finished product. Again, you, you're supposed to see the world outlined here. But so we, we updated the map several times um, as the story developed over several days. And then in the end, we used all of those different um, data files to create uh, an animation showing how the MAX-8 went from flying more than 8,000 flights around the world to um, having no flights in the air. Okay, so um, we'll just show you some more examples of how we use similar techniques of automation and layering for other stories. So this is a project um, that we did on car missions in the US. So, um, Essentially, it's just basically a giant raster map with really fine detail, and we really wanted readers to be able to pan around and explore their area. Um, however, we wanted to keep the original projection of the data, which is not Mercator, and we also had some custom styles like highway shields. Um, so we basically wanted to make a slippy map or fake a slippy map without actually using Mapbox. Um, and so to do that, we uh, also rasterize some layers and we'll show you how. So um, this is just a flat JPEG. That's the base map with our data. And then we have um, labels on top. That's just transparent PNG. So that's state names and like some road shields. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but they're there. Um, and then we have the SVG layer on top. And that's what readers actually interact with. And so that's, uh, those are metro area shapes. And um, we also, it's a little hard to see, we have state lines on there as well. And the reason we kept that in SVG was because they would just show up crisper um, on a web page in SVG. OK, and here's what it looks like all put together. So for this, we also had to make uh, our own tiles, quote unquote. Um, and because we didn't want to load one big giant map. And so to do that, I just cut the big map into four quadrants using this tool called Image Magic, which is a command line um, image processing tool. And um, all you do is you give it the big JPEG and then you tell it what size your uh, tile to be and then it'll make it for you. And then we just tiled it back together on the front end with CSS. Okay, but then we also have to attach the data to SVG layer. Um, but as long as you make sure your data is in the same order as how they're, um, you know, layered together in the SVG, you can just do that on the front end with JavaScript. And then for the pan interaction, that's just a simple CSS transform on the entire base map container. So then you end up with this, and um, you know now that you have the data attached to SVG layer, you can add things like tooltips to show information uh, from the data on the web page. Right. Um, so another type of projects that require these automated map making techniques um, is our hurricane tracker. So we needed to basically build a system that is able to handle the constantly updating map data, but still you know, gives us a lot of control of the styles. Um, so basically, we built a system that took some geographic information as reference and then match it up to our static base map and, then, um, and the hurricane data that was coming in. OK, so to do that, we just kept a separate file for each map that kept track of certain parameters, like the center point of the map, the projection, and other parameters that helped us um, calculate the extent of the map. So again, we'll show you the layers. So here's the flat base map, which has um, land, urban areas, roads, state lines. And this is all just uh, one JPEG. And then on top of that, we have um, 
so the setup actually it's an empty div container in the HTML and that allows us to consistently um, inject in updated data files. Um, so in this case, it's just an SVG layer that we do with D3. And that way we can use the same base map, but keep updating the data as it comes in. And because we have the parameters file, we could line it up uh, fairly easily. And then again, on top of that, it was just our labels in HTML. And here's what it looks like again, all put together. Um, so we can do, you know, with the setup for our hurricane page, we did a lot of uh, different maps. So here's for example, the track of the hurricane. Um, we can also animate models of the hurricane over time. Again, this is just vector data. Um, and we can also uh, add raster data as well, using the same uh, sort of workflow. Um, so this is storm surge flooding. And um, I'll just quickly run through this. So uh, for this, we use GDAL uh, in the command line. Basically, uh, we have this set up uh, written down like Dylan did uh, with a make file. That way it's easy to replicate. Um, so all we do is clip uh, the raster data to the extent from our parameters file. And then we color it with GDAL um, and then we convert it to a flat PNG. So again, we can do this over and over again um, using the same base map. Here's just another example uh, for um, I believe this is rain, rainfall forecast. Um, so again, we can clip the data um, by the extent, which is really helpful for us because this was um, uh, a vector or a JSON file um, from vector data that we load onto the page. So we don't want to load anything we don't need. Um, so for that, we use MapShaper to clip the shape file to the extent of our base map. And then we only needed, uh, we only loaded what we needed. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here are some links to those libraries that we talked about um, that may be helpful to you. And um, that's it. <laughs>